Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are water heater pilot light problems. So if you're having a problem lighting a pilot or having the pilot stay lit, regardless of whether this is a natural gas or propane water heater, we're going to go over 10 reasons why this may be occurring. Now before I go over the 10 reasons of the 10 problems, I want to show you how to light the pilot on the water heater, and I also want to take you into some of the key components within the water heater that make it work. Lighting a pilot should be fairly simple. You want to have this knob lined up with the pilot and you want to press it down. So if this was in the on position, you're going to turn it right here to the line up on the pilot, press this down, you're going to hold that down, and then you're going to press your spark ignition. Now look right down here. So you, you now have a flame lit, but it is burning very clean. So it's, it's blue and that's fairly clear but it is enveloping over the thermocouple. I'm going to take this assembly apart. I'm gonna show you up close images of each of these things. But what I wanted to show you first is you're gonna then let up on this button after about 30 seconds to a minute. Then you're gonna turn it to the on and then you can adjust your temperature setting to the desired temperature. So, so that's how this right here, this combustion area heats up what's above it, which is the water tank. Now I just wanna make sure that you know how this works and you have a solenoid right here and when you press this down, that's the same thing that you're doing when you press this knob down for the pilot. So you're pressing this down. Now, if this is heated up, your thermocouple right here is a 30 millivolt thermocouple. If that's heated by the flame, then it's going to be powering that electrical magnet. It's gonna hold this solenoid in the, in the down position, and it's going to allow the gas through the, the first chamber in this gas valve. And it's not gonna allow it into the second chamber until the, the temperature of the water falls down below a certain degree and then it's going to turn on the main burner depending on how you have this set. So I'm going to go ahead and heat this up and show you how this is holding this in place. This flame is going to be a little excessive but I want to show you quickly how this works. So right now we have enough current to hold this solenoid in place, you see it just popped up. And so that's what happens when the thermocouple cools off. So it's a flame proving device. And technically it's just a heat proving device, but that is how we prove a flame in a water heater. Problem number one could be that you have a problem with your spark. And so if you have a sealed water heater like this, you don't wanna be trying to pull the plate off or, or take this off, you end up breaking the glass, you don't wanna do anything like that. So. What you want to do is you just want your spark igniter to make the spark like it's supposed to. So you press this button down and then you just press right here on the manual button in order to light your pilot right here. You can see it did light. This is out of focus right now, but I'm going to take you in real close so you can see the actual spark itself. What I do want you to know about these is that there has to be a full circuit for a spark to take place down there. And that means that this, you see that little little bar right there, that's gonna be near the ground. And this part right here needs to be near the ground. And if you have a spider web or something insulating this from the ground, you may not actually get a spark down here. The other thing is you could have this wire being worn and maybe the insulation is off of it and you're sparking in the wrong spot, like right, like right down here. So that could be the issue. In my service bag, I always have an additional spark igniter. And that's because if this fails, I have another one and I can just go ahead and disconnect this. And you can take this off of an old water heater if you replace one. And what you wanna do is you wanna put this either on the ground of the gas valve or even better, will be right on the pilot tube. And the reason for that is that the pilot tube is where the spark goes up against and then you can go ahead and press it like that. So I'm gonna take you in for up close image over here. Now right here you see the pilot termination head, you see the spark rod, and you'll also see this thermocouple. Now the spark rod has ceramic on the outside because you don't want it to spark down here. You want the spark to jump from here over to the pilot head. So go ahead and take a look at this. And you also see that the, the metal is touching the, the pilot tube. So you can see that spark. So it's jumping in the right spot. So that's where, that's where you want it to, to jump across that. If you are looking through the hole through from the outside and you don't see a spark in here, then you know that this is sparking in the wrong location. So you should, even though you can't see the flame, you should still see the spark every time you press this down. So it's real important to make sure you're not grounding somewhere else and you're accidentally sparking, say, over here on the frame or, or back here or something like that. 
I'm going to turn the gas on now. So there you go. One more thing is that you could have corrosion right here or on the pilot head termination, and that's not allowing the spark to cross. So it's insulating the metal. So make sure that you clean these off, and that can be done with non-soaked steel wool. Problem number two could be that the gas valve supplying your water heater is in the off position. So this handle needs to be in the same direction as the gas flow. As well, this right here, it could be in the off position instead of pilot, or you may not be pressing it down far enough. So you want to make sure it's down all the way. You could have your natural gas meter shut off. You could have a propane tank that's empty. So you want to look at the propane tank and see the gauge to see how much propane you actually have. For propane, your inlet gas pressure should be between 10 and 13 inch water column. And if it's natural gas, it should be between 5 and 8 inch water column. Now you want to check your, your gas pressure while the system is off and also while it's on to make sure that you don't have too significant of a pressure drop. And you can just measure your pressure right here at your drip T. So you just take your regular cap off and then you put a tapped cap in place to take your measurement. And then when you're done, you just go ahead and put your cap back on. Problem number three is low gas pressure at the pilot head. So right here, there's a little orifice back down in here. I'll show you that. But what's happening is this flame is not enveloping the thermocouple. So it's just tiny. I know it's hard to see, but that's because it's efficiently burning. I'm going to try to just blow it around a little bit so you can see it. Very small, so it's not heating up that thermocouple enough. Here's the difference. You can see the, the flame is much larger now. And if I want to just wave it around, you can see it's fully enveloping that thermocouple. The problem for low inlet gas pressure to the pilot tube termination could be that these pilot tubes are clogged. And so this right here uh, could be clogged somewhere along the line, and so you could take compressed air and blow that out. It could be that. Or it could be a kinked pilot tube. It could also be something like this, where you have this little tiny orifice. You're not going to be able to uh, really poke through it. You might want to put it in parts cleaner or something like that and try to blow it out with the compressed air. So there could be a problem right at that little tiny pinhole that leads to the pilot head termination right here. Problem number four could be that this pilot tube termination right here could be bent outwards. And if that's the case, the flame will be over here instead of enveloping the thermocouple. So in that case, you don't want to just bend it back because it could end up breaking off right here. You want to buy a new pilot tube termination. Problem number five is a bad thermocouple rod position. So there's pieces that you get when you buy a new thermocouple. And so you want to make sure that you're using the appropriate piece in order to hold that in place. You don't want to just slide this in there and just let it rest. You want to kind of lock it into position. So this needs to get pushed up forward more in order for the, the flame to envelop that rod. Problem number six could be that the thermocouple rod is just dirty. So even if the flame is enveloping the rod, if this has insulation over it, be, meaning that there's carbon dust on the outside, you want to go ahead and clean that off. And you can do that by pulling that out first. So you want to go ahead and slide that out, and then we're going to clean it with non-soaked steel wool. So some people use a dollar bill, some people use sandpaper. I would uh, recommend to just use non-soaked steel wool. Of course, you, you can use something like a dollar bill, but basically this is going to get it a lot cleaner, and you're not going to leave any residue on the outside of the thermocouple. So right there, that's a lot cleaner, and so there's not going to be any insulation blocking the heat. Problem number seven is a bad thermocouple. So say you've sanded this down, you've made sure that the placement is good, the flame is enveloping the thermocouple, the flame's big enough. Now you want to start looking at testing the thermocouple in order to see if it's providing the correct amount of millivolts. So you can just go ahead and replace this. They are very inexpensive, just a few dollars. But what it is, is it's this stainless steel rod right here, covering, and then you have this right here, and that's your weld connection. So your dissimilar metal connection, and then your other weld is, is right from here to right here. And so you can also see that there is a wire on the inside, a wire on the outside. So you can check for voltage by, by trying to get to this inner wire, and that's going to be done at the very end of the connection, which is right up here. You just take this off with an adjustable wrench. And right here is the the inner wire, and then you have your outer wire here. So we can go ahead and clamp on that. The thing is, we're not going to be checking 
the voltage while this is while this gas valve is under load because we're not we're no longer connected in here. But let's go ahead and test it as it is right now. So right now we have our multimeter set on DC. So we, right here is the straight lines. So we're checking our voltage in DC. And what we're going to do is we're going to press our pilot button down. We're going to light our pilot. And now we're reading our millivolts. So it's going to be increasing. And anytime I let off on this button, our flame is going to go away and our millivolts is going to decrease. What I want to do now is I'm going to put our thermocouple tester on right here and we're going to see at what voltage or what mill voltage it's going to be holding on the the pilot gas right here. First thing you do is you make sure that you screw this in and you go ahead and screw this in. So in our last test you saw that we were reading our millivolts and it was increasing so we know that that thermocouple is actually good but let's go ahead and measure this. We just need one alligator clip here and one on the wire. So now it's above three. I'm just going to let go and both my hands are off of it now and it is holding that solenoid in place. Now let me just go ahead and blow out the pilot flame. And I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it or not, but it should. Go ahead and make a clicking noise. And we're watching it fall. It might be around 2 or 3 millivolts. But right now, if I was to ignite it again, you saw that it was still igni igniting it, so it did have enough millivolts to hold the pilot solenoid in the open position. So we are decreasing. Let's listen now. All right, so there it is. So if we press this spark right now, nothing's happening. Now I want to show you what a thermocouple looks like when it's separated at the weld joint on the inside, and it's not going to produce any mill voltage whatsoever. Uh, a lot of times when these fail, they're just going to need an absorbent amount of heat in order to produce the, the correct mill volt, so they just, they're not producing enough, basically. So that's usually how they fail. They're just very, very low mill volts, and it's just not enough for the pilot solenoid. So here we go, make sure you watch right here for the flame. So it's on right now, and I'm pressing the button in, and you can see on the multimeter that we're not reading any millivoltage whatsoever. So that thermocouple is bad. Now like I said, a lot of times they're just producing very, very low millivoltage and not enough for the solenoid. Problem number eight could be a loose wire connection, or it could be a, a bad thermal limit. So right here, you want to make sure that this connection is completely tight with an adjustable wrench, so not just finger tight. And then right here, I'm going to show you that what the back of this looks like, but I want you to show you right here, this is a manual resettable limit right here. So this is a thermal limit, so if it gets too hot on the inside right here, this is going to open up and this little red button is going to be popping out. And this has to be manually reset because that would mean that there's a, some type of a problem right there. This is what the inside looks like, and you have a, a thermal fuse in here, as well as your, this is your, your temperature rod right here that pushes in. But basically right here, I'm going to show you what this looks like, but there's a thermal fuse that is non-resettable, and you can see that there's, right on the side of right here, you have two wires coming out of the solenoid area. So it comes from here down to the resettable fuse, which is right there and then it comes out through the other wire back up and that goes over to the thermal limit in here and then after that it has to go through the thermal limit which is actually in this case a fuse and then it comes over back over to your solenoid so here's a more up close view and right there is your manual resettable thermal limit and on the inside here you have this so on the inside there, you see that thermal fuse, so that's going to open up and it's not resettable whatsoever. So that's what it looks like on the inside. It slipped right down in there, and it leads right over to the solenoid. So in this case, this one right here only has the thermal fuse, whereas this setup right here has both the thermal fuse 
and also the resettable limit right here. So any one of those, if they're open, that would be a problem. So I'm going to show you how to test this with resistance on the multimeter to see if there's a problem with that. So we're testing the resistance across here. So what we did is we disconnected the wires and we should have 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance across a non-powered and closed thermal limit. So that one is good. If it was open, what we would need to do is just press it down and then it would reset and it should be reading 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance, but then we need to determine why did it pop in the first place. In reference to the fuse that's located in your temperature sensor, this is actually in your tank, in the water tank. And so this thermal fuse should not pop and open up unless there's no water in your tank. So if, there, if there's a leak and the water was shut off, and basically what it's doing is it's making sure that the gas and the, the flames are not going to be turning on when there's no water in the tank in order to absorb the heat. So that would be a dangerous situation. Problem number nine is if you have a bad wind problem where you have the exhaust pipe to the water heater where it terminates through the building. Maybe it's too large or it's in the wrong location. And what's happening is the wind is blowing the flame around, which means that the thermocouple is not getting involved by the flame. The thermocouple is not getting hot enough in order to produce the current to keep the solenoid valve open. In that case, the solenoid is going to close and then the flame is going to shut off. A lot of times the wind is not powerful enough to blow the actual pilot flame out. It just keeps it off of the thermocouple until the solenoid closes. So that's a problem. Problem number 10 is if you have a bad solenoid and that's located in the gas valve. And so this is more of a rare occurrence because you can see the, the thickness of the wires. They're, they're large diameter wires. Um, the thing is, this could get hung up on the inside. So if this were to happen and you had a bad solenoid and you're just you're pressing in on that pilot button on the top of the gas valve and you're reading the proper millivoltage, you see the flame is enveloping the rod, you know that everything else is working good and it's the gas valve solenoid that's bad. So you would end up replacing that gas valve because it's, it's typically hard in order to get your hands on the proper solenoid. And each one of these solenoids is held down at a different millivoltage. So in this case, this one may be held down at only two we saw earlier, whereas other ones may take five or seven millivolts. So I would say if you have 10 millivolts or higher, then you know that you're good and that there's another problem. But once again, it all has to do with how much heat is being applied on that thermocouple. So remember that this is a 30 millivolt thermocouple and this right here can produce up to 30 millivolts. If you're looking to know more about the 750 millivolt thermal pile, I have some other videos on that down in the description section below. So make sure you check that out and also make sure to check out our website over at acservicetech.com. We also have a refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book, workbook and quick reference cards there. At our website, we have free articles. We've got our podcast. We've got quick tips. We've got Q&A, quizzes, and calculators. So make sure that you check all that out over at acservicetech.com. Our educational resources, such as our book, are located over at amazon.com, eBay, and also at our website at acservicetech.com slash acbook. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.